right, so what I'm going to do in this video is to demonstrate how to calculate free cash flows for a firm and then to use those free cash flows to value uh, the firm's operations and then the total value and equity value of the firm today. Uh, we're looking at four years of uh, information, financial information for the firm for 2010, 2011, and 2012, and then the forecast of the year is 2013. Just as a reminder, we're going to calculate the free cash flows for 2011, 12, and 13, but we only use 2013's cash flows to uh, determine the value of the firm because the other cash flows have already occurred. Um, what we want to start off with is to determine which of the uh, asset accounts and uh, liability accounts are operating accounts, that is, that are used for day-to-day -day operations of the firm. And the accounts that we're going to call operating accounts in this case are, are the cash account because we need cash for the day-to-day -day operations of the firm to pay employees and pay for utilities and things like that. We don't need short-term investments. This is excess cash. And so we don't need that uh, for day-to-day -day operations. This is cash that uh, companies will often keep on hand for speculative purposes or um, in case something goes wrong that they don't expect, but not necessary for day-to-day -day operations. We count um, accounts receivable as an operating account. Again, if we're selling things on credit, if we increase our sales um, on credit, then we're going to increase our accounts receivable. Uh, and inventory is the same idea. It's also an operating account as our sales grow or, or constrict. These uh, inventory uh, inventories will also grow or constrict along with sales. So we need those for day-to-day -day operations and we need to include those as an operating account. Uh, down below in the fixed asset area, our net fixed assets would be our operating account. We need increased facilities and plant and equipment if we're going to grow our sales and necessary for the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. Intangible assets um, generally are not considered to be an operating asset, so we're not going to include that in this, those in this case. Accounts payable, again, we're going to, if we increase sales, we're going to increase um, our inventory and the inventory brought on credit. Uh, so we consider accounts payable to be an operating account. And the same thing with accrued expenses. Accrued expenses will generally um, include um, accrued wages. Uh, that, that's generally a primary accrued expense. So we're going to include that as an operating account because that will grow along with the sales of the company. The remaining uh, accounts on here, uh, long-term debt and equity accounts, are actually the results of, of financing decisions that the firm makes and not necessary for day-to-day -day operations. They do need financing for day-to-day -day operations, but the form of the financing uh, is up to the company and not necessary uh, for the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. So this is what we're going to use to calculate our free cash flows. Um, on the next page over, I've got free cash flow valuation. Again, uh, free cash flows are equal to NOPAT, net operating profit after tax, minus the net investment in operating capital. So it's what's left over of our operating profit after we pay uh, taxes and then we make whatever necessary investment in operating capital and that would be the um, operating assets we identified minus the operating liabilities. And so to calculate this we have to start with EBIT because NOPAT is equal to EBIT multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. I provided the tax rate here for you. It's just calculated off the income statement. So NOPAT in this case is going to be equal to EBIT multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. And then I'm just going to pull this over. It uses the tax rate for each individual year to calculate that. Next we're going to include our net operating working capital. So the two keywords here are net, so it's net of those accounts payable and accrued expenses. And working um, means that it's the, the short term, or the, I apologize, the current assets that are operating assets. So to calculate this, I include my cash plus my accounts receivable plus my inventory. 
subtract out my accounts payable and my current expenses. And again, I'll just pull that across. And then below that, we have our net fixed assets. And again, those are just going to be what we have invested uh, in that year. So in 2010, at the end of 2010, the company had $40,000. So the sum of our um, net operating working capital and our fixed set net fixed assets are our is our total operating capital. So to calculate our free cash flows, we'll take no pat, which we've calculated above. And we can't calculate this for 2010 because we need the change in the total operating capital for our net investment and operating capital. So for 2011, NOPAT was 53.6169. I'm just going to pull that over. And then um, our net investment and in operating capital for 2011 was our total operating capital minus for 2011 minus the total operating capital for 2010 or 7123 and we'll just pull that over so our free cash flows would be equal to no pat minus the net investment and in operating capital for the year so for 2011 the company actually had negative free cash flows which isn't surprising for a high growth company uh, they would need to invest more in to more into assets uh, to grow the company uh, than they're getting out in operating earnings during the year. But we wouldn't want to see this happen in the long run. So for 2011, the free cash flows would be 1761.31. For 2012, it's 1642.99. For 2013, and this is the forecasted year, it's 2750.75. The next step in determining the value of the company is to project out the free cash flows in the future. And in some cases, you'll have multiple years where you would do the same thing as we, we did here and calculate the free cash flows out for several years and then maybe choose a long-term growth rate for those free cash flows. We're going to do something a little easier um, at this point. We're just going to calculate, based on the free cash flows in 2013, um, assign a growth rate to that and then discount that back to today. So. Our assumptions here are that free cash flows will grow at a constant rate of 5% after 2013. And the weighted average cost of capital for the firm is 9%. So based on, given that information, we can calculate the value of operations today because the value of operations is equal to the present value free cash flows of the firm. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, this is how you calculate. You use the uh, Gordon growth model or the constant growth model with dividends, except for in this case, instead of using dividends, we're using free cash flows. And because it's the free cash flows to all the um, investors of the firm or the free cash flows to the firm, we use the weighted average cost of capital instead of the cost of equity. 
so the value of operations in this case, so the value of operations at the end of 2012, and that's key here, we're determining the, the value of um, the firm at the end of what would be the current year, the current year being 2012 is what we have the information for based on the forecasted year 2009. So the value of operations at two, the end of 2012 is equal to the free cash flows at the end of 2013, before 2013, divided by the weighted average cost of capital, 9%, minus the constant growth rate of 5%. So our value of operations at the end of 2013, or excuse me, of 2012, are 68,768.68. To that, we'll add the value of non-operating assets. There were two non-operating assets, and, and again, because we're valuing this at the end of 2012, we'll use the values at the end of 2012 on the balance sheet. And those two um, assets were short-term investments and intangible assets for the firm. So the total value of the firm, or the total corporate value, the sum of the value of operations plus the value of non-operating assets. The next step, so we've, this is the value of the entire enterprise. If they had to sell the company off today, as it is, that would, this is the amount that they should sell it for, 92,673.68. To find the value of equity, then we need to subtract value of the interest bearing debt. So this is a pri prior claim for the firm. If the firm also had preferred stock, we'd want to take out the value of that preferred stock too. In this case, the firm doesn't, so we're going to just take out the value of the interest bearing debt. The value of the interest bearing debt, again, at the end of 2012, is going to be our notes payable plus our long-term debt. 46632 and that gives us the value or the excuse me the intrinsic value of the firm's equity which is $68,013.36 now assuming let's say the the company has a thousand shares outstanding get the value, the intrinsic value per share. Which would be $68.01. Um, using this information, we could look at the, the price that the firm is selling for in the marketplace, the stock is selling for in the marketplace, to get an idea if we believe that the, the stock was undervalued or overvalued based on how confident we are in our, in our estimation.